Every four seconds, Mars loses one pound of its atmosphere due to solar winds. How can we protect Mars from losing its atmosphere? What time scales are we looking at in losing its atmosphere? And what does Earth have that Mars doesn't? Let's talk about that. So in order to understand how Mars is effectively losing its atmosphere, we first have to talk about, well, the Sun. So the Sun has constant solar radiation that is exposed through solar flares and just regular activity that bombards the planets beyond, or the planets in the solar system. Now it affects their atmospheres and can even create auroras here on Earth. Now this is a problem because if a planet doesn't have a magnetic sphere or a magnetosphere to protect itself, then it's just going to constantly be bombarded by these ionized particles which will blast it away. And that's the reason why Mars loses its atmosphere. Well, what, what makes Mars different from Earth? Why does Earth have a magnetic sphere and magnetic field and Mars doesn't? What is the difference? So it turns out that 4.2 billion years ago, Mars actually did have a magnetic shield, just like Earth's. Back then, a long time ago, Earth and Mars were both much hotter than they are now. In the origins of the solar system, there was a lot of contact, there was a lot of collisions, there was a lot of action going on. And whenever you have two things colliding with one another, it creates a lot of heat. And when a lot of heat is created, the planets themselves aren't, as you think of them today, as really hard and solid and rocky. They're much more molten and iron and volcanic and much hotter. And because of that, the rotating metal actually creates what turns to be what turns out to be a magnetic field. And over time, that molten rock actually cools down, which creates a crust. And that's what we live on here on Earth. Now, Earth is actually pretty lucky because early in its lifespan, two rot or two rather large sized celestial objects collided with one another which made which gave it a lot more energy which is one of the reasons why it's theorized we still have a magnetic field because the core is still molten however it Mars wasn't so lucky it didn't collide with any massive objects and therefore its center core actually cooled down all the way so that's completely solid and therefore it well it lost its magnetic field so how can we effectively protect Mars? There's actually, there actually is a solution. So if you think about it as a flashlight, if someone was to shine a flashlight into your eyes, your first reaction is to cover your eyes and protect them from the photons, right? Because you don't want a bright light in your face. Now, there's, an, there's the same thing, but on a planetary level. You could actually put a magnetic field in between the sun and Mars, and by doing so, all the solar or solar radiation or ionized particles would be divvied out of the way and be blocked so that Mars would no longer be impacted. So instead of creating a magnetic field around the planet itself, you can put it in front of the planet which would protect it from this radiation which would protect the atmosphere. So how strong does this magnet have to be? Well it depends on how much you want to block and how big of an area you want to deflect. But the biggest thing or the, the range that people have talked about is anywhere from one to two Teslas. And to put that into perspective, that is about 50,000 to 100,000 times stronger than the magnetic field that we experience here on Earth on the surface. And that is the field that directs our compasses north. So you would have to create a very powerful magnet or put a very powerful magnet right in front of Mars that always protects it from solar radiation. So how do we get a magnet that's 500,000 to 100,000 times stronger than here, our magnetic field here on Earth? Well, as I mentioned before, a rotating iron core inside of a planet creates a magnetic field. And as I related to generators, you can use you can create electricity by having rotating coils around a magnet. Well, it turns out you can create a magnetic field with electricity too. If you work backwards and you create a generator that has electric field through it, or electric field through a bunch of coils, it ends up actually creating a very strong magnetic field. So it is possible to create a rather strong magnet. However, not maybe not on the scale of one to two Teslas that we're looking for. And it's not 100% sure how much power you would need because you have to look at how many coils you need to make and the actual area that it has to be deflected. And it's most likely not something that we would be able to do in our lifetime or in the next few lifetimes. But how do you put something in between the sun and Mars? Because if you have it orbiting Mars, it's just going to be behind it half the time and be useless. And if you have it orbiting the sun, because of how orbital mechanics works, the period can't be exactly the same. But there actually is one special orbit that can end up in. And this is called 
a Lagrange point. This is actually Lagrange point one. So what is Lagrange point one? So first we have to understand what a three body system is. So in this case, a three body system means that we're looking at the sun, we're looking at Mars, and we're looking at a spacecraft. And taking the spacecraft out of that situation, Mars is orbiting around the sun, and it's orbiting at a certain time frame. Now, if you look at the sun and Earth, the Earth orbits around the sun in one year. So Mars orbits around the sun in about a little over one and a half years that we have here on Earth, but for Mars, that is one revolution around the sun. Now, as I mentioned before, if you place it in a different orbit around the sun, it's not going to take the same amount of time. If it's closer, it'll actually go around the sun quicker, and if it's further than Mars, it'll go around the sun slower. But in a three-body system, when you look at that spacecraft, if you also look at the influence of Mars and the gravity that it has on the spacecraft, there are five locations where the period of the spacecraft around the sun is actually the same as the period of this of the period of Mars around the Sun and in this location one of them actually ends up being in between the Sun and Mars now that's exactly where we want to put it now this distance is actually 670,000 miles away from Mars so it's pretty far away but if we did have a civilization on Mars or we did have a couple manned missions we could effectively go and do other missions that go out to that point and either refuel it or do maintenance depending on if it were to break. Now how effective is this idea? As I mentioned before, it's almost impossible to create a magnet that strong with modern technology or at least a power source, but theoretically it is possible. So maybe that's something that we could see in the next couple hundred years, but I see it as highly unlikely that it comes in our lifetime. Now, in the next episode, we're going to discuss water on Mars, where it comes from, and what needs to happen in order for lakes and rivers to exist as they maybe once did. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.